This is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to share with you guys my fire, top fire. reasons why you shouldn't actually get a centrifugal ejection juicer, right? I mean, I know you guys may be researching juicers right now, and if you go to your local department store, pretty much the only style juicer they have is a centrifugal ejection style machine. And, you know, they are widely available. Um, and I'm going to go over the reasons why you probably shouldn't buy one of these if you have the choice. Of buying a juicer right you may want to spend a little bit more and get a slow juicer right the truth of the matter is there's pros and cons to every different juicer out there right and first and foremost I will say that if you guys get a fast juicer despite this video and you juice every day right that's better than not juicing every day that being said if you want to even do better than a fast juicer juicing every day do a slow juicer every day because as you'll learn, you're going to get higher levels of nutrition. You'll be able to store the juice and a bunch of other things. Um, first, I want to explain to you guys actually how these two juicers work. So you, get, you guys are an educated customer because, you know, while most pairs of shoes you put on, you wear, they're all a little bit different. Same thing with the juicers. Like you put the produce in, out one side comes a pulp, out one side comes the juice, but they work a little bit different. So first, just for example, today we have a Breville Juice Fountain. Uh, elite model, but all the Breville models are pretty similar, except for the Breville Crush, which is actually a slow juicer, but I think they discontinued that model. And even their Breville Cold Juicer, you know, is the same style centrifugal ejection juicer. Now, they say cold juicer, they don't say cold press juice because that would be lying, but a matter of fact, the high speed juicers, in my opinion, are cold juicers by default because they actually do not heat the produce up, despite you guys reading on many different websites that centrifugal juicers heat the Heat the juice up. This has not been my experience. I've tested this with an infrared thermometer. And actually, if anything, the centrifugal ejection juicers, if you're starting with cold produce out of the fridge, will give you a little bit cooler juice than even a high-speed machine. That being said, you guys shouldn't even focus on the temperature of your juice because the enzymes don't even start to degrade until, um, I don't know, 118 degrees. That being said, what does lessen is the nutrition. And as you'll learn... Uh, due to the design of the machine, you're just going to get lower nutrition. So anyways, how this guy works is actually you put your produce into this feed chute here. It goes all the way to the bottom. And when it gets to the bottom of the feed chute, if I can get this out, what happens is you have this uh, spinning disc. The spinning disc is spinning at high speed in excess of 10,000 revolutions per minute. That's really fast. And then uh, basically at the bottom of this disc, there's basically like uh, these little grating nubs. And these are kind of sharp, so you can cut your fingers if you pass them by there really fast. And when you put the produce in, literally the produce is shred up or micro shred up. And as it shred, it releases the juice out, which then is basically just uh, free floating in here. And because this is spinning so fast, kind of like when you're going around one of those, uh, you know, turns on the freeway, the cloverleaf turns. You know, you, you lean out, right? So all the juice actually gets flung out these little small screen holes and then it goes, um, you know, into the glass. So this happens at a very high speed. And, you know, the main thing is here, it's actually shredding um, the produce, which may not break open the cell walls um, as much as actually a crushing method that we're going to go over next. Uh, in any case, then, your pulp is kicked out into the back. And this extraction method, you know, it, while it may do fairly well in terms of yield with hard vegetables such as carrots and celery, with softer fruits, it tends to leave a very, uh, you know, wet pulp such as the apples. And on things like the leafy greens, uh, herbs and wheatgrass or cannabis, if you're trying to juice cannabis, it does a very poor job in my opinion. It doesn't juice those items effectively and literally will spit out whole chunks of leaves um, in the hopper bin. All right, so that's how this guy works. And then over to this guy, this is actually known as the Omega MMV 700, Omega Mega Mouth. This is a, a vertical slow juicer with a wide three inch feed chute. You know, so that has a three inch, this has a feed, uh, three inch feed chute. And how this works is a lot different. Once you put the produce into here, there's no high fast spinning blades. There's actually just a single auger here. Now this auger, uh, runs at a low and slow 60 revolutions per minute. So as you put the produce in, it goes into this auger. Literally, it's literally crushed, squeezed, and ground up to extract the juice. And as it's crushed, squeezed, and ground up, the crushed, squeezed, and ground up juice uh, then comes out these juicing holes here in the screen, and it comes out the front here, 
and the pulp is ejected out of the bottom of this screen. And then you have a wiping blade that actually goes around and keeps the screen clean for you. There's no kind of wiping blade on the centrifugal ejection. And, you know, I've juiced in centrifugal ejections many times, and sometimes the screen will get clogged full of stuff, and it'll kind of get it off balance and whatnot, and some juicers may actually walk across your counter. Um, so, yeah, this one runs at a slow speed. So, I mean, that's the basics. I didn't want to get really into any more detail. I do have other videos comparing more in depth uh, these two guys. But basically, this works by uh, shredding and uh, centrifugal ejecting, and this works by basically just a grinding, crushing, and squeezing. So this I would consider a cold press juicer because it was really crushing and pressing out all the nutrients in the juice. Uh, the next thing I want to do for you guys is actually go ahead and do a quick demonstration where I juice like 12 ounces of juice to show you guys the process, how long it takes, and also what happens to the juice before I get into my five reasons why you don't want to buy a centrifugal juicer. So now we're all ready and set up to juice, but before we get juicing, actually I want to give you guys a weigh-in to make sure we have an even fight. What I'm juicing today are two apples, half a beet, and five uh, collard green leaves out of my garden. Let's go ahead and do a close-up on the scales. Over on this scale, looks like we have a total of 13.2 uh, ounces. And then over on this scale, looks like we've got a total of 13.2 uh, ounces as well. Back that up, and you guys could see uh, both those scales at the same time. Uh, yeah, 13.2 ounces, so it looks like we have an even fight. So first, we're going to go ahead and juice in the Breville. This is going to be really quick and a little bit noisy, so we're going to go ahead and turn this baby on, let it spin up to speed. We're going to take our leafy greens and roll them up into like a cigar and uh, put them in the machine. We've got to use the pusher to push them in. We're going to follow that by our beef. Apple. Finally, another apple. All right, we're all done. One of the things I like about the Breville is that it is super fast, and look at that, man. <clears throat> I mean, look at the, the juice here on the HD. Super foamy. Next, let's go ahead and juice in the Omega. On this guy, we're gonna do a little bit different technique. You know, we're only gonna put like one leafy green, or uh, two leafy greens in at a time. Then we're gonna go ahead and follow that with one apple. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and follow that with a couple of uh, leafy greens here. Now, optimally, I, I should be uh, pre-cutting the leafy greens for best results because long fibers can get stuck in this machine. Uh, because I am doing such a small quantity today, I am not uh, pre-cutting, so that shouldn't really be uh, too much of an issue here. Next, we're going to go ahead and put that next leafy green in, get sucked in. We're going to put the, uh, the next apple. And then uh, finally we have that beat. Now, as you guys can see, this is going a little bit slower. That one ran at high speed, made lots of noise, and is already done. This one's actually still going. Uh, this one actually, the apple's still sitting at the top, so we're gonna kinda let that go. Uh, get sucked in and get processed and get juiced. And the thing I wanna remind you guys, when you do buy a slow juicer, you wanna slow down, right? Just because it has a hot, fast, uh, you know, a, a wide feed chute doesn't mean you can cram stuff in as fast as you can. You wanna let each item uh, fully processed before putting the next item in. So uh, finally we got the beet there and the beet you can hear it crushing and squeezing out all the produce. Definitely uh, this is a much quieter uh, than the high speed uh, Breville that we had over on this side. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, let this run a little bit uh, because the juice is uh, still flowing out of the machine. Alright let's go ahead and turn this guy off. We could let it run all day and uh, we just did a small amount of juice today, so I guess the next thing to do is uh, I like to always tip both machines up a little bit. Not much juice left in there. We'll tip this guy up a little bit. Let's see if there's any juice in there. A little bit of juice left in there. And then uh, now let's go ahead and clear this stuff out of the way, and let me go ahead and give you guys actually a comparison of what these two juices uh, look like up close. All right, let's go ahead and show you guys those juices up close. So if we look over on the Breville side, you can clearly see there's like total what's called juice separation. All the juice is at the bottom, and then the foam is actually all risen up to the top. Literally, like this juice to me looks like it's almost like half foam, half juice. Uh, meanwhile, over on the Omega MMV 700 Mega Mouth, you know, we have actually a really nice, consistent juice, you know. Um, it is uh, fr pretty fully mixed in there. Uh, you know, it does have a little bit of foam on the top there. Let's go ahead and show you guys that. It does have a little bit of foam on the top, but uh, significantly less foam. 
uh, than the Breville. Now, it's really kind of hard to say the yields in these because the Breville has made a lot of foam, and if I count the foam in, you know, yield testing, that may, uh, you know, not be valid. But, uh, anyways, on each produce item, the yields may be different depending on the juicer. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, back up and tell you guys more about um, why you shouldn't buy a centrifugal ejection juicer. All right, so you guys just saw the close-up of the juices. This has actually a lot of separation. This is basically all well homogenized or mixed, except for like the, the yellow beet that actually all the beet juices up in this area. So we probably could stir that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and put these actually to the side for you guys, uh, leave in the camera view so you guys can see what's going on with that. But now I want to actually show you guys actually the pulp that was created. So, you know, here's the pulp from... The Breville that I've uh, put a plastic uh, bag here to catch so it's easier to clean up. And if we uh, dump this out here, as you guys can see, like, there's still whole chunks of beets that literally went through that machine without getting juiced. I mean, look, here's whole chunks of apples <laughs> that didn't get juiced. I mean, if we look at the leafy greens, look, there's big chunks of leafy greens. Like, man, this is good for a salad that literally came out of the juicer that did not get juiced. I mean, I could probably take, oh look, here's another piece of beet, right? This machine just kicked through like big pieces of stuff without even juicing it. So you're gonna lose yield basically if you're juicing in a high speed centrifugal ejection because I mean, it does not do an effective job on leafy greens and may even leave pieces of unjuiced produce which is not doing you guys any good. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the pulp on the um, Omega MMV and we'll put that out. And number one, I want you guys to look at the volume comparison. I mean, there's a lot of pulp right here on this side. And on this side, there's a much less pulp. So on this, let's see what happened to the leafy greens. Literally, the leafy greens got turned into this. I mean, this is just basically crushed up. You know, I wouldn't say it's completely dry because I could probably wring out a little bit. Man, a, a very little bit actually. It was quite efficient on juicing the leafy greens here. Um, you know, very little juice left. These are just all literally ground up into the strings of in the leafy greens, so that's kind of impressive. You know, the beet on the other hand, here's what the beet looks like. I could mush this up in my fingers. I mean, this is just beet mush. I mean, there's very little juice left in this compared to like, you know, whole pieces of beets. And to compare the greens, I mean, once again, here's like solid um, bunches, bunched ground up greens, and here's greens left from the Breville juicer. Finally, the apple, all right, let's see. The apple you can kind of see here because it's all congealed and mixed up in the pulp, but this is kind of the apple, it's the lighter pulp. So yeah, this one was really effective at juicing the apple. Meanwhile, the Breville over here left chunks of apples. So this is like the comparison, right? And I'm glad that I could do these comparisons to shed some light on this situation for you guys so you guys could make the appropriate and right choice for you, right? And that's simply what I do. I have over 500 episodes on this YouTube channel uh, comparing and contrasting all the latest juicing technologies so that you could get the items you want to juice most, juice the best, by educating yourself and watching my videos and seeing my demonstrations on how each machine works. It's true that every juicer has its pros and cons, and if your most important consideration is, John, I just want to juice fast, because otherwise, frankly, I'm not going to juice, right? Then use this. This can be done juicing fast, but then, you know, the cleanup can take a little bit of time because the, the, um, the screen area on any juicer is the hardest uh, you know, place to clean and it's going to slow you guys down the most and it has actually a lot of screen area on the Breville. You know, meanwhile, you could buy a slow juicer, actually the Omega NC800 or 900 model, which I actually have a video on. I'll put a link down below in the description if you remember. It's basically the fastest juicer in the world I've ever found to clean. It takes me 80 seconds to clean. That being said, it will take a bit longer to use or a bunch longer to use uh, than the Breville. Um, but, you know, so every juice has their pros and cons, and you personally need to figure out what's the most important to you, right? I got into juicing because I almost lost my life. I had a health crisis. I was put in the hospital. The doctor said I might not make it out alive, and luckily I made it through uh, th that situation. I could only stay through higher powers, and then I got out of the hospital. I had to figure out how to turn my health around, and I found that by simply eating more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, especially the leafy green vegetables and other vegetables, we could be a lot healthier than eating standard American junk food and processed foods and animal foods in excess, which is what actually most people eat. And that's really the, the value of the juicers. They really allow you to concentrate and maximize your intake of the best foods and most healing and health-providing foods, anti-cancer foods, in my opinion, in the entire world. 
So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into my reasons why you shouldn't actually buy a centrifugal ejection juicer, all right? Number one reason you shouldn't buy a centrifugal ejection juicer is because it does not juice the most important vegetables in the entire world that you guys should be juicing, in my opinion, and that most Americans are simply not eating. It's the leafy greens. The leafy greens, wheatgrass, herbs, even medicinal cannabis, if it's legal in your state to do so, right? These high-speed machines, as you guys see, leave big chunks of greens unjuiced, right? My goal every day is to eat two pounds of leafy greens. If I juice a pound of greens, a pound of greens juiced makes literally one cup that I get simply juice and drink and get the nutrition. But when your juicer doesn't juice those things, you're SOL, you're out of luck, right? You're just gonna be wasting the leafy greens and the leafy greens can get quite expensive if you guys are buying them, right? And then if you're not getting the yield and you're wasting big chunks, right? You're wasting your money, you're throwing your money down the drain every time you uh, you know, create a juice because your pulp still has a lot of juice in it, right? So that's kind of sad. So I would always encourage you guys to actually grow your own food, grow a garden, because then you could have unlimited leafy greens to juice. So I don't feel so bad because I grew these leafy greens in my garden, which I have, you know, they're growing as I'm talking to you guys, which is amazing. A second reason why I believe you shouldn't get a centrifugal ejection juicer is because they are noisy. You guys heard when I turned this on, I could barely talk to you guys. You could barely listen, hear me. Right? It's really loud, super loud. You know, customers have described that to me as, John, I've an airplane taking off in my kitchen every time I juice, and I, I wake up really early in the morning, and I, and I try to juice while my family's still sleeping, and I can't do that with a high-speed machine. You know, some people are noise-sensitive, actually. My girlfriend's noise-sensitive, and this machine is really loud. Meanwhile, when I use this machine, right, it's really silent, really. I mean, it's quiet. It's, it's much easier on the ears so that you can actually juice and do the healthy things you want while the rest of your family or roommates are sleeping. Third reason why you shouldn't get a centrifugal ejection juicer is because once you make this juice, as you guys can see, it's really separating bad now into layers. Um, you should not store the juice, right? Um, because there's a lot of froth and extra air in that froth and it was created at a high speed, you know, um, the juice is not gonna store as long and maintain its nutrients as well. That being said, once you make any juice, I always encourage you guys to drink it right after for highest possible health benefit. The longer you let your juicer juice sit around, even if it's made in a slow juicer, it will degrade over time. That being said, juice in a slow juicer will degrade slowly, and juice made in a fast juicer will basically <laughs> go down here really fast. So it's extremely important if you do end up getting a high-speed machine is to drink the juice right after you make it. Sometimes I know people are busy and they like to want to be able to have the ability to store their juices and I want to say if you guys want to do that you definitely want to go for a slow juicer because the juice will degrade slowly based on actually a scientific testing I've seen. Reason number four I believe you shouldn't buy a centrifugal ejection juicer is because it makes a less nutritious juice, right? Now this depends on what specific nutrients you're looking at and companies can cherry pick data of course, you know, they could juice the same exact thing and look in our juice it made more calcium or something like that or they'll cherry pick and they'll compare calcium to calcium or they'll compare, you know, this vitamin to this vitamin and they could pick the vitamin that favors their machine, whatever it is, right? So what I like to look at instead of looking at specific nutrients and comparing certain nutrients that can be cherry picked, I'd like to look at the whole spectrum of different nutrients, right? and look at it as a whole instead of like just as these isolated uh, nutrients. And so in general, when you look at overall uh, testing, nutritional testing between a high speed machine and a uh, l slow juicer, the slow juicer will win out, you know, and it'll win out especially in some of the most important nutrients in a juice. I mean, in a juice, there's lots of nutrients. You know, there's water in the juice, there's actually the soluble fiber in the juice, there's vitamins in the juice, there's minerals in the juice, but the most important nutrients for me are the phytonutrients or phytochemicals. These are things like the lycopene, the zeaxanthin, the beta carotene, all these different phytonutrients that can help us ward off disease and stay younger uh, from reports I've read. And it, you know, basically in studies it shows that the slow juicer will retain more of them. Actually, I'll put a link to a study actually down below to a PDF, which is a published research study. Um, I printed out actually one of the graphs here. And if you guys could look at this graph, um, in this graph, they basically uh, used uh, three different extraction methods. Method one, which is actually the white bars, which you can see are extremely high. Uh, that's actually a slow juicer, fairly similar to this one right here. Uh, method two, which is actually the black lines you guys are seeing, which are actually in... in Many instances are much lower except for one, which is actually a bit higher. Um, 
uh, there's uh, lower nutrition, and then of course the final bar, which is actually uh, the gray, is actually a blending, so a high-speed blender running at 10,000 RPMs. So as well, you could see the high-speed blender, the nutrition was uh, definitely uh, lower than a slow juicer as well, but in some cases actually higher uh, than the high-speed juicer, which is quite interesting. And, you know, once again, if we look at the white bars, you can see in general they're all higher um, in most cases except for one case was actually just a little bit lower, right? And you know, that's how it is in life. Nothing's ever all this or all that. There's, it's always ratios, right? So basically overall, and th what this test shows is actually how effective the juice was when they put the juice from broccoli or the blended mixture from broccoli in with active cancer cells. Now, I don't know if it's going to act the same way within you, you know, drinking the juice with active cancer cells in a little Petri dish, but basically based on their testing, the slow juicer had significantly more anti-cancer um, uh, fighting ability uh, than the high speed juice or the blended one in you know most but not all of the situations so you know that's basically it I mean do you want to be able to juice fast and drink the juice which yeah drinking any fresh juice is better than not drinking it or do you want to have up to 50 percent more phytonutrients that can help you or that has been shown in this uh, test tube or petri dish study to kill more cancer cells the choice is up to you. You know, I just make these videos so that you guys can be an informed customer and you guys could know the truth. And that's just simply how I operate, you know, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I try to be as truthful and transparent and give my resources so that you guys could do your own research and figure out the best juicer for you. And, you know, I personally don't even use centrifugal ejection machines unless it's for a video like this because I don't want to waste my time. Uh, I mean, this thing has been sitting on the shelf collecting dust until I brought it out today to film for you because I only use the slow juicers in my lifestyle to, um, you know, increase the amount of phytonutrients uh, in my diet so I could be the most disease-proof as I can. All right, the last thing I want to do is actually show you guys a close-up on these two juices as they've been sitting and as, as I've been yabbing. But look at this. Basically, in the high-speed juice, you can see some distinct layers in there. And actually, on the other juice, you can see pretty much, it pretty much looks like how... Um, it was as it came out of the juicer, so there's no separation. And so that's a very interesting, you know, just to see the differences. So if you guys enjoyed this episode um, and liked it, uh, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work by making your purchase at DiscountJuicers.com. If you make your purchase at DiscountJuicers.com, this directly allows me to make more of these videos, and if people stop buying from me, I'll have to stop making my videos because I won't be able to put food on my table, pay my light bill, or my... my uh, my mortgage or whatever like that. So I would appreciate and uh, thank you guys uh, if, if you guys will purchase from me and uh, thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that will purchase from me and thank you guys for those of you guys that have purchased from me in the past. It allows me to continue my important work to spread uh, the truth about juicers uh, and blenders, dehydrators, as well as create other videos, educational videos on YouTube. So thank you so much. Um, also, please know that at Discount Juicers, you know, we do have a price match policy. So if you do find a lower price somewhere else from an authorized retailer selling a brand new item that they have in stock, uh, we'll be glad to match the price for you guys. So you guys don't have to like, oh, I could get $5 cheaper if I don't buy from John. No, buy it for me. You know, I'll match the price as long as it's a legitimate retailer. Please be aware that some Ill illegitimate retailers uh, may be selling black market, gray market machines that may not include a warranty. So if you don't buy a juicer brand new from an authorized retailer, you may not get the warranty on it. In addition, if you buy from Discount Juicers, you will have me on your side as a liaison to help you with any juicing questions or problems that you're having with the juicer after the sale. Um, also, if you should have any kind of warranty concerns or problems with the machine and the manufacturers are not taking care of the warranty for you, all you gotta do is let me know if you purchase the juicer from me and I'll actually send a few emails and heads will roll <laughs> and uh, you know I will get your uh, legitimate warranty situation taken care of without any issues you know because I know some people that have bought juicers from other places have had problems with some of the manufacturers I represent but I could say that every customer at discount juicers have always got their warranty claims uh, satisfied so yeah that's pretty much it for this episode if you guys enjoyed this episode hey please be sure to give me a thumbs up that'll be uh, you know motivate me to make some more videos such as this one also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I've come out about every five to seven days you never know where I'll show up or what juicer or maybe even vacuum blender I'll be testing and also be sure to click the little bell if you are a subscriber so you actually get notified of my um, when I do have a new video out 
And uh, also be sure to share this video with someone else that's considering buying a centrifugal action juicer so that actually they could learn the truth about these style machines. Also be sure to check my videos, you know, I'll put links down below in the description to over 500 other videos where I compare and contrast different juicers so that you guys could select the right juicer for you. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.